shall tell you this this Christmassy story um, told originally around a Christmas Day campfire um, in in lieu of of any other presents. And as far as I have heard it, it was uh, what a wonderful gift to be able to sit and listen to a story being told on Christmas Day. Because the presents that we get given, as wonderful as they are, often, particularly when we're young, they get trashed or broken or forgotten about by the time the next year has rolled around. But the stories stay with us um, and are the gift that, that keeps on giving. And this story starts with an old collie dog. And the old collie dog lived in a little village and he didn't have an owner per se. He had been abandoned many years before, but he'd stayed on in the village. And so in a way, he was kind of the village's collie dog. He would make his way around town and people would give any scraps of meat that they had to him as he went around from door to door. And on this particular day, he woke up in his resting place and it was cold outside and the collie dog said I think I'll go I'll go for a wander through town I'll see if there's anybody at their doors who can give me some scraps to eat and he made his way down through the little village but there was no one around all of the people were tucked away in their warm houses and their windows glowed with firelight and candlelight but there was nobody out in the streets and the collie thought well this is very strange very strange indeed. I tell you what I'll do. I'll go and speak to my friend the peacock. He'll have something to say about all this. And so he made his way to the bungalow of a merchant. And he went around to the back and threw a little hole in the hedge. And as he made his way through there into the yard, there was a little shed with a, a peacock hen who was sitting on an egg. And there, sat up on a post, was the peacock himself. And he went, ah, Collie, it's yourself. And the collie said, it is indeed, it is indeed. He went, how are you doing on this fine day? And the collie explained he had come down through town. There was no one around. And the peacock said, ah, yes, that'll be because they are celebrating their Christmas Eve today. Everybody will be gathered around having fine meals, looking at their Christmas trees. And the collie dog said, oh, what a fine thing. What a lovely thing that everybody will be celebrating on this day. And the peacock said, well, it is true, it is true, but, uh, you know... Not all of the people in this village will be having as good a time of it as others. And the collie said, Yes, now that, now that you mention it. When I was coming through, I passed the old uh, widow woman's house in the, in the house at the very end of the village there, and she didn't have a light in her window at all. It looked quite dark inside. It must be a, a poor time for her. And the peacock said, Yes, it is sad indeed. And they sat quiet for a moment, and the collie said, You know... That old widow woman, she is always so kind to me. She doesn't have much herself, but what little she has, she always shares with me. It would be a good thing if I could bring her some sort of a Christmas, if there was some way that I could repay her kindnesses. And he cast his eyes around, and he saw a pile of peats in the yard there. And he said to the peacock, oh, what? Whose who's peats are these? And the peacock looked and he said, Oh, well, those those are my master's peach, the merchant. And the collie said, Well, if, oh, if I could have a couple of those, that would make a fine fire for the poor widow woman. And the peacock said, It would indeed. And, well, I'm sure my master wouldn't mind if one or two of them went missing tonight. And as the peacock and the collie were discussing this, squeezing through the hole in the hedge, came a great black tomcat. And the tomcat, like the collie, had no home to speak of, but was the village's tomcat, and would go around and get whatever scraps and belly rubs and love that he could get from the people in the village. And the tomcat came over and said, so what are you two talking about then? And the collie said, well, I'm, um, it's Christmas Eve. And the old widow woman in the house at the end of the village, she, she has no fire, she has no light in her window. We were just thinking if there was some way that we could bring a Christmas to her. And the peacock said, well, we've thought of a way to get her a fire, but uh, what use is a fire if you haven't got a decent Christmas meal to eat? And the collie thought and he said, now I know, the shops are closed now, but I know a way around into the back of the butchers. He leaves a few scraps there for me in a, in a bowl and I only ever eat what's left there, but you know, I could take more if I wanted to. 
and there's all sorts of wonderful things in there. I'm sure, I'm sure that the butcher wouldn't mind if a little string of sausages went missing. And the tomcat went, and I know a way into the back of the fishmongers. I go and get the fish heads and the guts that are left behind there, but I could take more if I wanted to, and I'm sure I could get some fine kippers that we could bring for the old widow woman, for she is very kind to me, and I would be glad to give her a Christmas. And so the plan was laid. The peacock said that he would tuck a peat under each wing, and he would meet them outside the front of the merchant's bungalow. So off went the collie to the back of the butcher's shop to grab a string of sausages. Off went the tomcat to the fishmongers to get two fine kippers. And back they came, carrying their precious cargo so carefully, so carefully, so that it wouldn't drop down onto the floor. And the three of them, the peacock, the collie and the tomcat, made their way down through the street of the village. And what a sight it must have been to see the three of them going together. But, of course... Nobody was looking. Everybody was busy in their own homes with their own Christmases. And they made their way. It didn't take them long to get to the end of the village, to that old widow woman's house. And there, there was a hedge around her house and the gate was swinging gently open. And up on the gate post, there was an owl. And the owl went, ooh hoo what are you all doing here? And they explained that they had come to bring Christmas to the old widow woman. And the owl said, oh, the old woman is not very well. She hasn't had a lot to eat these last few days. She's barely thrown me any scraps. And the collie and the cat and the peacock showed the presents that they had brought. And the owl was so excited to see it. He said, oh, let me come too. Let me come too. And hopped down off of the post and they made their way up to the front door. And the collie scratched at the door. But there was no response. And he scratched again, and then they heard footsteps coming towards the door, very slow, very faint. And the door opened, and there was the old widow woman. And they could see into her house that everything was dark and cold, and her fire was barely a glowing ember. And she looked down at the collie dog, and she said, Oh, collie, collie, it's good to see you, but... I'm so sorry I have nothing I can give to you and on Christmas Eve as well but without even pausing the collie and the tomcat and the peacock and the owl marched their way into her little living room and in front of that small fire they laid down their presents and when the old widow woman saw what they had brought a smile came over her face and she said my dears my children You've brought me my Christmas. Oh, thank you, my darlings. I will take these sausages, I will take these kippers, and we shall have ourselves a Christmas supper together. And off she went into the kitchen. And the rest of them piled the peats onto the fire and they caught quickly and soon the room shadows were clearing and the space became warm and bright and cosy. And the peacock looked around he said, you know, it is a poor Christmas indeed, if one cannot have a Christmas tree. And the collie said, well, Peacock, where are we going to find a Christmas tree at this time? And the Peacock said, ah, but I already have a Christmas tree. The greatest Christmas tree. And Collie said, what are you talking about, you mad old bird? And the peacock looked down to the owl and he said, Now, owl, you didn't bring a present, but you have very bright eyes. So you come and stand on this side of the fire here. And cat, you have very bright eyes as well. You come and stand on the other side of the fire here. And then the peacock stood between them. And with his back to the flames, he spread his tail feathers. And as the old widow woman made her way back into the living room with the sausages and the kippers, she saw the owl's eyes and the cat's eyes twinkling in the firelight. She saw the flames flickering through those green leaves and she said, My dears, you have brought me a Christmas tree and the greatest Christmas tree I could ask for. And she wiped her tears of happiness from her eyes on her apron. And they all sat in that little living room. They shared that Christmas supper. And the old woman told them stories until she was too tired and had to go to bed.
And she saw out, she opened up the little back door, and she saw out the collie, and the big black tomcat, and the peacock, and the owl. And they made their way back through the town. And indeed, those four were the only ones who had given that widow woman a thought that Christmas Eve. But between them, they had all had the greatest Christmas in the village. Thank you very much, everybody.